somebody. Oh, I don't know who. Love her. Do you still want me to talk about it? No. Come on, let's get out of here and play some tennis. Well, I thought you'd never ask. Your place? I have a, an annual physical with Ernie Garrison. Take me a couple of hours. If I'm late, just let yourself in and uh, make yourself at home. I'll meet you at the house at 3 o'clock. Yes, sir, boss. Tennis at 3 o'clock. Oh, John, can you do me a favor and take those clowny dogs home? My pleasure. Don't let them push you around. Come on, gang. Let's go. Goodbye, John. I'll see you at 3. You ought to do this for money. Is this the best you can do? Well, let's find out. trace for five minutes. Then I'll be back. Thanks, Ernie. Damn physical's taking longer than I expected. I'll get there when I can. Whenever. Oh, Charlie, help me settle an argument with this big shot doctor. Ernie won't take an expert's word for it, so you tell him. Now, in the movie, Citizen Kane, what was written on Kane's sled? I mean, exactly what was written there. Well, the sled's hanging in your den. It says, uh, Rosebud. You hear that, Ernie? Here, Charlie, I'm holding up the phone. You tell him nice and loud. Rosebud! pain now? No, I never felt better in my life. That's it. All right, one more time, and that's it. All right, officer. 
They're all yours. Uh, Lieutenant. They're my dogs. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. You must be Dr. Mason. Here I am, playing away with these dogs as if nothing happened. I know what a terrible shock this must have been, sir. I mean, coming home and from the doctor in Orland, and finding out what happened to Mr. Hunter. I'm Lieutenant Columbo, sir. Homicide? I'm afraid, sir, that uh, we have to make out a police report in every death, sir, where the victim wasn't under a doctor's care. Are you a physician yourself? No, no, my doctorate's in psychology. You're very tall, sir. For a psychologist? Or for someone whose dog's just killed his best friend? It was just a general observation, sir. You're an acute observer, Lieutenant. What'll happen to my dogs? Well, for now, sir, they're being held by the animal regulation people. And then put away? Well, that's up to the court, sir, but I'm afraid under the circumstances... I'm not arguing the point, Lieutenant. Obviously, they have to be destroyed. Oh, Dr. Mason. Dr. Mason. Excuse me, sir. Are you Dr. Eric Mason, the mind control doctor? Not mind control, life control. There's a difference, Lieutenant. I'm not a Svengali. Oh, I didn't mean to imply, sir. Just last night, my wife was talking about your institute. Oh, you're a very famous psychologist, sir. Mrs. Colombo, she's highly enthusiastic about taking one of your 48-hour sessions to study control, sir. I understand her enthusiasm, Lieutenant. But it seems that I can't even control my own dogs. Well, you know, that's been bothering me too, sir. They don't seem to need much controlling. I mean, they're very affectionate animals. I hit it off with them right away. They hit it off with everybody, Lieutenant. Until today, sir. Yes. Until today. Uh, were they trained, sir? I mean, some kind of guard dog training? The only training they've had is to be affectionate. The victim, Mr. Charles Hunter. Dr. Hunter. Dr. Hunter, sir. Did the dogs get along with Dr. Hunter, too? With everyone. Including Miss Joanne Nichols, sir? Look, I don't know how many ways I can say it, Lieutenant. Right, sir. Uh, according to Sergeant Burke, Miss Nichols called in her report just after 3 o'clock while you were still at the doctor's. Uh, I understand she lives with you, sir? Not with me. On the premises. In the guest house. Right. I've never believed the myth about Dobermans turning into spontaneous killers. I still can't get it through my mind. Something happened. Charlie must have done something to provoke an attack. Can we just step into the house? Just one more thing. <laughs> 